guys welcome to our sunshine food channel now sunshine food is all about african meals um for us we're looking at how we can really redefine african food my name is joy fido and welcome on board okay so today we happen to be in germany uh, we've been on this trip and we just arrived and we're just about to prepare food for dinner but what we've decided to do as we are here on this holiday we want to be showing you everything we cook just so you start getting a better idea of our, you know our dream about the african food we're looking at fine dining with african food it's all about packaging and presentation and making it look really attractive so that's what it's about and what we're cooking right now the main focus of this particular video is okra but okra done in a different way from the regular way of doing it um, is going to be what we call okra with stew so okra with stew you can eat with so many things but we're going to be eating it today with just eba okay so the main thing remember i said okra and stew so we're going to start by preparing the stew that will go with the okra so first is the meat we're just going with just meat beef for this stew that's our beef and then we start by steaming the beef now we showed you how we steam beef but we'll just do like a recap on it if you happen to be following our video for the first time or watching our cooking video for the first time so that's your meat already washed ready to cook now the next thing that needs to go in there is onions so we put the onions in um next thing we will want to put there will be garlic so what we've done with the garlic i'll show you we just use the garlic crusher and you put your garlic in it and you just crush it so we we'll crushed some already and that's what i'm going to be working with right now see how it crushes it so that gets crushed and then you just put some in the pot and we'll put some salt so some salt just for taste not too much just a pinch of salt the next thing we put some seasoning which is most times we work with maggi so we'll crush some here and we'll just it will normally be about two cubes of maggi which was about three in this plate so we just added that in and then other things could be any herbs or herbs that you like working with and i love working with basil a lot so i'll just put a little bit um rosemary is one of my favorite as well again just a little bit of rosemary and that's it you don't have to put too much it's all about just simmering it seasoning it and then allow it to cook and take the taste of all these herbs and spices that we put in there and so now we put the, the heat on and allow it to cook okay so in this case we love working with the pressure cooker and that's what it is so you just close it and then let it snap once it snaps it's, it's closed now with the pressure cooker it cooks really quick but if you didn't have that and you don't like working with pressure cooker just use your regular pot once it starts to cook lower your heat carry on with what you're doing and then it will cook okay so we added some water to the meat this is because we are using pressure cooker if you're using pressure cooker remember to add some water because it dries out really quickly and if you didn't add any water it will burn but if it's regular pot you don't have to add water as the steam will just bring water from the meat okay so meat is cooking you can see the pressure coming out of the pot to show you that it's definitely pressurizing while that's going on we're going to start getting the okra done but we've done video with okra before and 
We've shown you how to cut okra, but just again to remind you, we just want to show you how we cut okra. So this is the head of the okra and the tail. So you just get the head off, and that's it. I'm taking head off this one and this one, get the head off. And what you could do is you just try and kind of like cube them if you can. Same thing here, just cut into it to make the slices smaller. And you do the same thing here. There's so many ways of preparing okra. You could even use um, the okra cutter, which is like um, like a grater, and you just grate it on it. But if you want to cut it, this is the way we do it. Now, I tend to just bunch quite a lot up, and then I put it together, and I just cut them together. See that? So I don't spend hours cutting okra. So I've done quite a bit already, but I just needed to show you some on screen. And so you just go with it and cut, 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 cut. Now, if you then push, you know when we're cutting in the long, long, the longitudinal way, <laughs> longitude. Anyway, if you didn't push it all the way to the end, and then they come out in round, round formats like that. What you then do is go back on your side and just kind of cut through them. And that makes them even smaller. So especially with the type of okra we're going to make now, it has to be really, really small, you know, sizes to allow it to draw because we want it to draw in order to make this stew idea come out well. But if this isn't going to do it, we're going to show you something else that we also do. We've got the okra cut already. Remember the main focus of this video is getting this okra ready. And then stew is just what goes with it. So, remember I said there are two ways we can look at it. We've cut it to be really, really small sizes. But if you want this okra to really draw, which is what okra does, become slimy, this is not enough. And so the next thing you do is put it in a blender. Now, by the way, that's not my idea. I'm not this expert at cooking okra. The person who is good at this is right here with me. And that's Charles. Yes, because so, if you if you if you don't blend, if you don't put it in the blender, you put it straight into the pot. You have okra standing one side, water standing one side. Okay, so it will never draw. Okay, so, so you put that? you put the okra in that blender like that. Mm -hmm. You can even add garnish to it. So small how much water? water much? Small water. Are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm, we put, put just a little bit of water. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'll just fetch the water. Anyhow, you want to put water? Put water thing. in it. Is that fine? Add water. Put water. Don't Add worry. Tea. Add water. Some more. Just a little bit more. Yep, that's fine. So we put very yeah, little water, very little it must water. have been yeah. about, I don't know, measurements. Measure very, very little water in there. So now, then, before you do that, you need to make this the okra interesting. Okay. Put some seasoning in it. Okay, what kind of seasoning? So, a bit of salt. By the way, this is Charles doing this cooking, so yeah, I'm just yeah, yeah. assisting. So master, a little bit of salt. The master himself is here today. Yes. Chop a uh, maggi in it. Okay, can you help me just do that? You just do it. So this is what we're like in the kitchen. When me and him are in the kitchen, it's always one big argument food, war going on. Food wars, food wars. Food war goes on. So, Put to small. save our argument, I want him to really speak to you and Put tell you what he's uh, doing. Baggy inside. So no, he's no good. grammar for that one. Yes. I like to put some chop on. No, I'll put the chopped onions after I finish blending this. Okay. But I will blend that with that baggy inside. Uh -huh. No water. What about garlic? Garlic inside the okra. When when you're making it or After no? I put garlic. Maybe later. Later. But yeah, garlic is good, not just because it's okra, but I put garlic in most things I do. Okay. The nutritional benefits of garlic. Heart, heart conditions, 
the garlic is good for you. Okay, so what? You want us to put a little bit in there? Put small inside. I don't know this one. This one is from. Uh, I think this is. This is German spice. Anybody, yes. anybody speak German in this house? I don't but know. But I think. Um, I don't know. Stick to the one I know. Basil. Basil, even. <laughs> uh, inside this one, too. Small one. Okay, so what we're doing, we're just trying to make it um, tasty. For, can those, it for those who can't understand my English, too bad. I've gone to worry right now. I'm now a proper Niger man cooking mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just Okay, cover. so we, we blend. Blend down. Oops. Okay, so okra, all we're doing is, what do you call it again? Distress it. Mm. We don't blend it. Enough. So all we've done is just press a little bit, not too much, just play around with it, just a little bit, and that's it. That's it. Because you all you're trying to do is to just make it become really slimy. You to know? increase the, the draw attitude, you know, slimy. how much can it be slimy. Yes. That's the whole point of so it. So that's ready for us to cook it. We're going to start cooking ready to cook this okra, get it ready for our stew for eating. So okra is coming in. So okra goes straight into the pot. Now when you're cooking slimy okra, what do you do next? Chef, Chef Charles. Charles Biscuit. Yes. So nice and fire. Two things you can do. You can use a fork to do the whisking. If you haven't got this kind of if you haven't got a jet jet HT like this. Just use simple This is the uh, Oyubo one. Whiskey. So I know people in my village don't have this. I use toothpick if you like. Oh. I use toothpick, chef. It will work. You have toothpick. Do you, would you like to introduce salt to this? Or mm, you can it? taste. I think we definitely need salt. You can taste for salt. Taste for. Okay, can I help with the whiskey? This can. So normally, this, I've seen him do this in the kitchen a lot. So you whisk it, whisk it, whisk it. What the whisking does is it helps to make it even more slimy, and that's. The whole idea of this particular way of making a pork really slimy. Mm. Additionally, because ok you really you want to overcook okra, you want to cook okra as fresh. little as possible to be yes. fresh. Yes. So the whisking activity releases all those lovely nutrients in the okra to infuse with the ingredients that you that you, 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 you put in there. So the whisking is not just because you want it, yes, it should draw, definitely should draw, but the whisking sort of, you know, takes out, bring, brings out all of the lovely goodness. So would you say this is okay now? That's okay. Do we need to put any salt? Done. Taste for it, if you need salt. But we haven't put any salt before. No? No. I thought you did. Did I? Well, you must have. No. Okay, salt. Yeah, I got this for salt. We we'll just put a little hint of salt because mm. I know we put some spices and herbs in it. Yeah, I've been I've been known to to, to chuck in some prawns in there. Now this particular food is just his favorite, so yeah, this is why he loves this with the I, I think I also, gonna see what I also this like to look like. I sometimes put some prawns in there, um, smoked. I put some smoked fish as well. I'm going to, to also put some uh, spinach as well, just to give it some some body and a, a bit more. So okra is done. You want it really fresh. I'm going to taste it. Normally you use your hand when you're tasting. It's really nice. Yeah. This food is very is local to Yoruba people. You will not really see Yoruba people cooking like this. Or mm -hmm. 
It's more than Yoruba dish. Yeah, it's Yoruba, but it's also your five people who. And this is done. No. I. Yeah, it's done. It's done. We'll, we'll, we'll do the next thing now. What I say to my kids, which I say to everyone, once it's done, just push it away from the cooker that you were cooking with. See, it's still cooking. You push it away, that way it's not cooking anymore. Okay. You leave it there, okay. your food will start cooking more and more and getting burnt. It will, it will lose the freezer as well. And that's the okra done. Mm. Let's face our stew now. Okay, so now we're ready to make the stew and we need to look at our ingredients first. First thing is the plum tomatoes. Now if you're not with plum tomatoes, just go with regular tomatoes. But you know what we then do? You kind of like boil it off, boil the excess water off. So the plum tomatoes doesn't require much of that. Now, if it's me making this too, I'll go with two things. But Mr. Chef, Charles says no, let's take with one. So we're going with just one. And then, scotch bonnet, one again. Because my young son doesn't like too much heat. He gets really angry when it's hot. And then we're going with the onion that we've chopped. Goes in there. And we're gonna go with some garlic. Now normally, because you're gonna blend, you don't need, you don't need to crush the garlic. You could have just added that garlic straight up. What else do you think I should put? I wanna put some spices. So I'll put some rosemary. Again, with rosemary, you can either blend it or you can just put it straight into the pot. So rosemary is in there. I'll put some basil. Um, if it's me doing just this, I'm very adventurous, but this is oregano. O oregano or oregano. We call it oregano. I'll go with that. But everything else I won't because Chef Charles would get really upset if there's anything in the food that he doesn't know and he finds it in there. So that's that's it. We're ready to blend now. Um, you could add a hint of water. Yeah, because it's, it's looking quite dry. We want it to blend a little bit. And be because these tomatoes are quite thick in it, I'll just use it to get the water. And I'll just rinse that thickness that's in the container into the blending so that becomes the water that I need oops and so yeah empty now so we're ready to blend okay so we just added just a little bit of oil not too much considering the meat we're going to use and as the oil is heating now remember with oil especially regular um what do they call them vegetable oil, vegetable oil you don't want to over bleach them because no, then they don't. become unhealthy yeah. so as it's just about to uh, just as you put it in you put the onion in and now your your meat starts going in Because you don't want it to say, car caramelize the onion. Yeah, when the onion yeah. starts getting brown, that's what they mean by caramelizing. Yeah, the 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 yeah. So by this adding the meat yeah, yeah. in, you're equally frying it as well, which is a good thing. Because normally I, I kind of like you to enjoy meat fried first before you even stew it. But when you put that in, it helps to fry it ahead of time. So it's going in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we put all the meat in there. You can see it already cooking. And then you now introduce the maggi, which is like um, seasoning. And um, again, you could go in, I will go in with just a little hint more herbs. This was going to be a rosemary. And rosemary happens to be our favorite herb in the house. 
just a little bit. It's, it's so it's such a beautiful scent it has. So now we're gonna introduce the Okay, so what we did, we allowed the meat to season into that oil and everything that we added there. So it takes a bit of that taste. So give it like a two, three minutes and then you introduce your blended tomatoes. And now you stir to make sure everything goes in really nicely. You cover it and then you allow it to cook for at least 20 minutes. Bob, your uncle. Okay, so now this is your sauce or stew already. Now you know stew is ready when you can see the oil separating from the rest of the tomatoes. Can you see that? See the oil on its own? That's a done stew. So here we're done. So okra and stew all done. Next thing you'll be seeing now is all serving this food and you and ready to eat. Okay guys, so this is it. We finish our food. Now that's the okra on the corner and that's the um, stew on the other side. So what we decided to do was to make pounded yam instead. We could have made gari. So many things you can eat this way. You can eat it with gari, you can eat it with uh, some people will eat this with rice. Um, you can eat it with semolina, semovita. Um, what are the other things? Amala. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, ground rice. So there's so many different types of carbohydrate you could eat this way. And um, there you go. We hope you really enjoyed this video. We hope we've been able to share some knowledge or some skill that we have with you. So we look forward to seeing you in our next video. And if you really did like this, which we hope you did, please give us a thumbs up. Um, remember to share our video with your friends. Uh, like us, show that you like it and tick it. And also take that notification bell so that whenever we put any videos out, you will get to know and then you will watch it. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. And God bless you abundantly. Thank you.